I guess off the top, just from a, a local angle coming out of AEW tonight, was the announcement of their first Toronto dates for later this year, October the 12th and 13th. They're going to do a Wednesday and Thursday night uh, back-to-back set of shows with a live Dynamite and then doing Rampage on the Thursday night. And this will be from the Coca-Cola Coliseum, uh, which is the home of the Toronto Marlies and where WWE largely comes now for their their live events uh when they're house shows up here yeah for their house shows live events because Mm -hmm. um tv is few and far between although they are doing tv here at scotia bank in mid-august uh but tickets will go on sale august 26th and i'm trying to recall just off the top of my head i know for house shows wwe can typically put in i want to say around nine thousand in that hmm. place. So I don't know what the configuration is going to be for AEW with their set if they use up everything. Um, but I I would imagine the demand is going to be very high. But nonetheless, that's still a lot of tickets to push for, for back-to-back nights as opposed to just one. I don't think they will have any trouble um, selling up to 9,000 per, per night. I mean, I, I, I suppose it's a true test, especially for Rampage on the second night. I, I think the second night is more your question. I, I think the first one, it, it's going to be a hot ticket. I, I suspect it's going to be pretty high on the, the second night, but it's, it's still, it's, um, those fans that will be willing to go back to back and and you're not going to have this isn't like this is a weekend event either um will you get the same amount of of travelers that are coming up when dynamite's it's going to buffalo in september um you know you will get some um but i i do think like montreal this is probably the closest you'll get to uh aew if you wanted to make that trip if you're in ottawa montreal so those are those are going to be hot shows, and I think it'll be a, a hot ticket for sure. Well, I mean, you know, being being from here, I think that there's always been so much discussion about when they will run here um, and also more discussion about where they would run, you know, with people, you know, uh, really suggesting stadiums for this sort of event. So I can say for me personally, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't go bigger. Um, well, Scotiabank, it, one of the problems is, um, at least for that week, I believe Michael Buble has a concert one night and then the Leafs have their home opener the other. So for that particular week, uh, Scotiabank Arena was not going to be an option for them. And I think th- those are your your available options. So why does I, it have to be that week? Well, I mean, AEW's running, you know, that's that's just their their touring schedule. I mean, yeah, you you could have, I guess, selected another week. But, I mean, you are talking about this is if you're looking to run in the fall, uh, there's a lot of conflicts at Scotiabank when it's you're full into the NBA and NHL season, uh, especially if you're looking for back-to-back nights uh, on top of that and other entertainment options too. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, Scotiabank, I think they could have run. Uh, another factor is what is the amount running – uh, Coca-Cola Coliseum versus Scotia Bank Arena are like a few thousand extra tickets. Um, mm. is is that offset at all by you know y- your rental cost? It's also the fact you're running two nights. That's you don't have to pay for travel for your your folks, and you're going to get two gates instead of one. So there's and it's one setup as as well. So they're going to be doing you know probably two very sizable gates as opposed to just one um, that they would do at Scotia Bank. Yeah, I just find it interesting because I feel like the possibility, especially for that first show, would have been for, for there for them to to you know go shoot for the moon. Personally if, uh, speaking, but you know, like l- listen, they, they can do this and then they can come back with a big show, and I'm sure they would do just as well. Uh, I, w- I would say if they sold out both nights, I would say the prospect of doing a much larger show in in the next year, you would think that that would that would grow exponentially, perhaps. Yeah, so that is a that will be an interesting on sale to watch. Uh, August twenty sixth again is when uh, tickets go on sale. Let's focus on some WWE stories, and they announced yeah, on yeah, and just going back to that, I'm I'm a little surprised they wouldn't have waited for the Buffalo date to announce it because I, I imagine this might this might impact some Buffalo sales. Uh, possible. I mean, they've, I think WrestleTix has the Buffalo show at over 4,000 now, but I guess, you know, with the on sale being August 26th, that's before the Buffalo show. And they probably wanted to, um, get the, get this on sale with, you know, that amount of weeks, uh, before it. Do, do you suspect automatic sellout for night one? At yes. least. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think, I think so too. Um, and, and if they sell out both of them immediately, that's, that's huge. If they can move, you know, in the neighborhood of 16,000 tickets, that's, 
that sounds like a lot to move, but I think night one for sure is going to be a very, very heavy demand. I think just the, the speculators market already, um, you'd probably be moving that that amount of t- those amount of tickets, at least for the first night. Second night, I, I guess it's more of a question, but um, I, I could see this being hot um, on, on that end as well. Are you going to go to both? Night one and two? Yeah. I don't know about that, but yeah. at least one of them, definitely. And maybe we'll try to plan something for us. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Didn't even uh, think about that. I'm, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm kind of the same as you. I'll de- I'll definitely go to one. We'll we'll see about both. But anyway, there you have it. WrestleMania 40. WrestleMania is turning the big 4-0 mm-hmm. in 2024. They are going to Lincoln Financial Field, the home of the Eagles in Philadelphia. It is going to be taking place on. April the 6th and 7th of 2024, and then the surrounding events of Friday Night SmackDown, the WWE Hall of Fame, and Raw will take place that weekend at the Wells Fargo Center, uh, not isolating any, any dates for that, mainly if the Hall of Fame is going to just continue to be tacked on to SmackDown rather than be its own event, which, I mean, people are already um, assuming that you could make certainly a, an ECW inspired Hall of Fame that year if mm-hmm. that is something that they believe they could market an entire Hall of Fame around, which I, I would think would be an automatic choice. It's it's always it, it, interesting to see like how ECW would be treated and who they would view as a, as a big enough headliner. Like, do they view a a Paul Heyman as such that headlines a Hall of Fame class? You know, I feel like headliners are typically reserved for. Um like people that are wrestlers and, and wrestlers of, I, I suppose, a certain um, caliber. But I could certainly see Heyman being a part of a class. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like who's who would you say are the biggest names to come out of BCW um, in in history? I would say given uh, WWE's relationships with people that they would be looking at. I mean, they've already put in the Dudleys. So you would have, you know, your your dreamers. Um, RVD. RVD's in. They've done RVD. He's already in. They did him. He was one of when they did the double class last year. He was in one of those. I totally forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Who else? Sabu. Sabu is one you could put in. Uh, Sandman. Um, Dreamer to me would be the, um, mm. the 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 one to uh, lean on. Which I mean, God bless. I don't think Tommy Dreamer is headlining the Hall of Fame class for WWE. No. No. So. Um, we will see. It's a long time away before a, uh, a Hall of Fame ceremony, but two nights, which is obviously going to be the uh, the format moving forward. And um, yes, kind of just uh, just threw out a press release today. They didn't do like the ceremonial like press conference in the city to make that make the big announcement. I feel like now is a terrible time for a press conference of any sort. Valid, yes, yeah. valid. Um, so there you have it, Philadelphia, uh, two nights. We will see. I've never been to Philadelphia, to be quite honest. Me neither, actually. It, it is. It might be a bit of a draw. It's only eight hours away. Yeah, Philadelphia is. Uh, and it, what's what's also interesting is that um, Philadelphia. It's it is a state that that does require like a commission oversight on hmm. like the independent level, and hmm. I have to definitely like brush up on um, you know the the licensing requirements and stuff like that. But also, it becomes the obvious question of like the secondary venues for independence. And, you know, you have the 2300 arena there, but uh, I'm sure plenty of people now uh, staking out venues uh, to run in Philadelphia, which is, you know, you can also, you could go out of state as well beyond uh, Pennsylvania, but nonetheless, Mm -hmm. that is uh, the news on the, on the WrestleMania front for 2024. So we have Inglewood, California next year and then Philadelphia. Okay. Exciting. Yes. First time in 25 years, WrestleMania has been in Philadelphia, way. Yeah, what was the last one? Uh, it was the 16? first. Uh, 15. 15. 15. Was the okay, first. Yes. Uh, the first Rock Austin. It yes. wasn't. It, it was a pretty bad show, to be quite mm. honest, from my my recollections. That was the one with uh, the Boss Man in the Hell in a Cell. Mm. Classic. Yeah, oh, not so much. Uh, what else do we have? So, Seth Rollins and Riddle. Off of SummerSlam, WWE made the announcement that the match is postponed and they are using the the injury angle on Monday uh, as the reason for Riddle uh, being medically disqualified and uh, Fightful reported. And I was told the same. This is a kayfabe injury to Riddle. This was more a creative decision and the match is being moved from SummerSlam 
And I guess it's um, like I've heard Clash at the Castle is where this match could end up, presumably, um, unless they have a a, a different uh, direction for this. But I mean, it would somewhat make sense if you feel you don't want to do this match at SummerSlam, you would put it on the next big show. But it sounds like this was just a creative decision. And I guess that's why the angle was shot on Monday, because I mean, if there was an injury, um, you wouldn't have seen physicality on Monday and Riddle did a match. So just a storyline reason. It's an interesting one. Number one, because the feud had already been built. Um, And number two, it's not like WWE to necessarily just kind of take matches off um, for creative reasons. Now, uh, is Seth Rollins going to appear? Like, judging by his tweet, it doesn't seem seem like he is. Is he going to wrestle? He put out a tweet uh, apologizing to people that had paid, had bought a ticket um, for SummerSlam um, with this match promoted. And, you know, it it was a totally out of character tweet uh, from Seth Rollins and just thanked the people for singing his song and ended it by saying, uh, maybe one day they'll hear you or something to that effect. And then Paul Levesque responded, I hear you. (laughs) <laughs> interesting okay yeah because i mean there's there was speculation immediately after the announcement that this was some sort of setup for some sort of surprise opponent for seth but it doesn't look like that I, I mean i've seen no place. advertising of rollins for uh SummerSlam. um mm-hmm. like i i don't get the impression like none of this announcement included rollins having a new opponent for SummerSlam. it sounded right. like just this match is being taken off uh that's not to say they could not have a presence on the show in some form or fashion but no match is being advertised now hmm Interesting. So one last match for SummerSlam. Uh, Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics reporting that NXT's next premium live event will be Sunday, September the 4th in Orlando. Uh, Sunday, September 4th being the same day as AEW's All Out. And it would be the day after Clash at the Castle. So they have, um, th- there is no um, time um in, in terms of uh, being reported uh, for this show, uh, I think it would be nuts to go head to head with the AEW pay per view, but you could see an afternoon event from NXT on the same day, which is going to make this just a our latest in a <laughs> long line of weekends that are just way too much. Haven't they done this in the past, like run in an afternoon um, on the same weekend as a AEW show? Uh, I, I do remember the one where it was um, the NXT UK show was in the right. afternoon of an Maybe AEW that's what show. I'm about. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I would have to think it's an afternoon show. I and in, if it's an afternoon show, it might bring a bit more attention to uh, you know your your typical uh, wrestling fan if they're looking to make a day out of watching professional wrestling. Let this be the kickoff. Essentially, <laughs> after, but, after the day before making a day out of watching like Clash at the Castle. Well, listen, a whole. A whole 48 hours of professional wrestling we can't get enough just every single day there there can be special premium live events um, yeah. but yeah a, a, an interesting decision regardless that they are uh going uh w- with that with that date uh regardless i mean this is going to be in orlando it's really just up to the viewer at home if you want to watch an extra two and a half hours of professional wrestling and frankly there are plenty of people that will watch both of course, absolutely. Especially, I mean, you know, I, I'm curious to know what the booking is going to look like right now for, for NXT 2.0 under, I mean, a new regime up top. Could that trickle down to 2.0? Yeah, well, it's a good segue because uh, Tuesday's number for NXT, they did 600,000 viewers and a 0.13 in the demo. Um, viewership was up 2%, not a big difference from last week. And the demo was identical with last week. So um, women 18 to 49 had a, had a bit of a bump to it. But unlike Raw, uh, this one did not seem to benefit at all from all of the creative changes and people being curious. And I would think NXT would be one where there would sort of be that curiosity factor, uh, but didn't seem to be the case on Tuesday night. It was just a standard number. Maybe at this point, you know, people realize that NXT 2.0 is is quite detached. Um, or or watch Raw, and maybe we're realizing that the the yeah. changes are not going to be immediate. Like I would say, if you turned into Raw and it was a 180 style of show, I think there would have been some of that trickle down to NXT um, mm-hmm. w- with the idea like what changes uh, could be a front. But um, you know, they and they did have a big boost on on Monday for for Raw, and I don't think that is all attributed to you know Rey Mysterio or being in the Garden. I think the main thing was all of the all of these executive changes and Paul Levesque being uh, installed in that position. Um, w- one thing that was uh, kind of odd was in in Canada, uh, NXT did 38,000 viewers, which is not like a 
an odd number that they did. It was down a bit from last week, but in the, in the demo and in Canada, the main demo is 25 to 54. So that's why I always cite that demo in Canada. They only did 4,000 people in the demo. And that is an unheard of low figure of uh, 25 to 54 uh, that watched this show. So of the viewership, it was much, much older uh, that watched. And I don't know what the explanation was. Like they did 22,000 last week for comparison purposes. And is there a big some, curling match or something? I don't know what was you going on. They've gone against everything. NXT's gone against everything. And I can never recall such a low number. Like I, I hmm. have no idea about that. Raw on Monday did a 1,901,000 viewers and a 0.5 in the demo, um, up 8% in viewers, up 7% in the demo from uh, the week before. Um, very, very strong viewership, especially in the first two hours. They topped 2 million in the, in the first hour. Uh, in 50 plus, they did a 1.0, uh, in, in that particular demo. Um, there was a loss of 15% viewers throughout the show, 13% in the demo, but I mean, number one on cable by a landslide. I think the next highest was a 0. 0.30, so a commanding lead of the, the cable numbers, and um, especially for two hours, um, held up very high, and I saw that clip going around that everyone's uh, watching when Paul Levesque was on the Steve Austin podcast, and they, mm-hmm. they, they've they isolated the clip where he said, if I could make one change, it would be raw going to two hours, and I'm sure that there are people that are thinking, man, now he can just move raw to two hours. Guys, there is no prayer of this happening. Um, not now, not in these negotiations. Like you've brought this point up, Wayne. It's the perfect one. This would be the equivalent. Uh, if you looked at this as like each hour was its own show, which is how it's broken up, you'd be eliminating the third largest cable show on a Monday night. And not to mention that that revenue. Like, there's no way USA wants to lose that third hour. There's no way WWE wants to lose an hour worth that value as they go into these renegotiations. Like, I can't say there's a hundred percent no chance of Raw ever going back to two hours, but God, is it slim to none of Raw ever going back to two hours? But it seems like there is this hope uh, because Paul Levesque said it uh, seven years ago. <laughs> Well, first of all, I don't ever recall making that point, but I thank you for attributing it, it to me. Um, you, you've mentioned that. before the fact that when we talk about the third hour, <laughs> it's still beating everything else non-football related. I will, I will take full credit. Yes. I remember all yeah. your great points. You know, um, of course, like he is purely a uh, head of talent relations and he's also the head of creative. That this this not is make- not his domain in the least. You're right. No, but of course his wife, yes, it, it, it is potentially in charge of a, of a decision like that. But um, co-CEO is Nikon. And overall, this is still a publicly traded company. And the bottom line is how much money this product makes, not how watchable the third hour is, not how watchable perhaps. Um, ultimately, yes, I mean, if, if people are turning out in droves, then maybe, but they're not turning out in droves. It's still winning the night, even That's the it. third hour. Like so. even even if USA Network like valued this property so high that from 265 million, which is the average annual value for raw, they came in these renegotiations and said, we will give you 300 million just for the two hours. Hmm. Well, then the natural reaction is, well, how about you give us 400 million and we'll give you the three hours. Like your, your valuation of that third hour is huge. There would be neither side is incentivized to walk away from that other than for, you know, viewership satisfaction, which is, uh, like that that's just not a meaningful enough reason that it this third should hour. be it really should be mm. but for for this company and I, I think the people that they have to answer to um maybe it's a different game there's no way anyone on those sides could could justify that that move and mm-hmm. if it's if it's viewer if, if it's viewer friction that you are creating with this and, and you could probably make a pretty compelling argument that that third hour has eroded the audience at a faster rate than the loss of just cable homes has. That's certainly an argument, but it is offset by the, the financial incentive to have that third hour. But anyway, you can just, argue like the erosion would have taken place even if this was a two hour show because of the quality of the show. Um, I'm not going to say that three hours doesn't hurt things, but I mean, it, even at one and a half hours, like the type of show that we've been getting for the past five years, I, I don't think would have done done it any favors. Yeah.